And now, public health, helping you prevent tomorrow's public health issues today. Hi, I'm Caleb Mavar. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing and a master's in public health. I've been a nurse for the last 10 years and the last six and a half years, I've been working as a clinical research nurse. I've had the opportunities to work with multiple infectious disease doctors and had the opportunity to work with an infectious disease doctor on my capstone project for my public health degree. I'm making this video because of the 10 essential public health services, the third is to inform, educate, and empower people about health issues. Conversely, I'm very interested in combating misinformation and helping you sift through the plethora of information that we can gain from the internet. Should I believe everything I read? Well, we're gonna talk about that. Today, we're going to be discussing the viral video, Plandemic. Plandemic was a documentary that interviewed Dr. Judy Mikovits, a biochemist and a molecular biologist. Dr. Judy Mikovits got her PhD from Virginia University and George Washington University. A couple of things that I'd like to discuss in this video are, one, the lies that were told in Plandemic, a couple of ways that the video was misleading, and also that there does appear to be an ulterior motive behind the making of Plandemic. Let's jump right on in. Dr. Judy Mikovits makes the claim that millions of people have died because of vaccinations. And they'll kill millions, as they already have with their vaccines. This claim is not new for her. This is an unsubstantiated claim, however, and she provides no evidence in the video. Millions of people have been saved from vaccinations. Let's talk about polio. Let's talk about smallpox. Let's talk about rabies. Um, polio uh, vaccines have saved millions of lives. And the, there's about a 15 to 35 percent death rate if you've gotten polio. That's very high. That's 15 to 35 people in 100. Dr. Mikovits also makes the claim that there are currently no effective vaccines that protect you against RNA viruses. There is no vaccine currently on the schedule for any RNA virus that works. This is fundamentally wrong. Polio, rabies, hepatitis A, rotavirus, um, measles, mumps, and rubella, these are all RNA viruses and they all have very effective vaccines. So that is just a lie. Dr. Mikovits makes the claim that the coronavirus or COVID-19 appears to have been manipulated in the lab. It's very clear this virus was manipulated. These, this family of viruses was manipulated and studied in a laboratory where the animals were taken into the laboratory. And this is what was released, whether deliberate or not. That cannot be naturally occurring. This is actually unclear. It, do, it does not appear to be manipulated uh, by all the studies that I have seen demonstrate that it does not appear to have been manipulated in the lab. This is not a man-made virus. She also said that viruses don't just jump from animals to humans. That's just not how it works. Somebody didn't go to a market, get a bat. The virus didn't jump directly to humans. That's not how it works. Viruses jump from animals to humans all the time. This is called zoonosis. It's not uncommon. Um, rabies, Lyme's disease, the flu, salmonellosis, the plague. These are all viruses that jump from animals to humans. Dr. Mikovits also claims that she taught Ebola how to infect human cells without killing them. In 1999, I was working in Fort Detrick in USAMRID there, and my job was to teach Ebola how to infect human cells without killing them. Ebola couldn't infect human cells until we took it in the laboratories and taught him. So her claim that she taught it how in the 90s, it doesn't correlate with the facts that are, again, easily verifiable, easily verifiable facts. Ebola has been around since 1976, and it's been infecting people. She did not teach it how to infect humans. Now, there does appear to be an ulterior motive with Dr. Mikovits making uh, the Plandemic documentary, okay? Uh, ultimately, she's trying to sell her book, and that's not a bad thing. 
but you have to understand that when she dis um, when she claims that people who have a financial motivation they tend to lie well she has a financial motivation so should we trust her well I hope that I've shown you that with the the the, the lies that have already been in this video we shouldn't trust her you can't take people at their word just because they seem really nice and they are experts right you need to use critical thinking skills when evaluating what's right for you. However, when the general consensus of the scientific community agrees, that's probably a true thing. If you think there's a conspiracy, everyone can't be in on the conspiracy. You need as few people as possible in a conspiracy. All right? So I, I, don't, e I don't even think there is a conspiracy. I think it would get out too quickly, okay, and too easily. Um, so I don't think there's a conspiracy here, um, but again, she does have an agenda. She's trying to sell a book. Also, she has another financial motivation, and that is she has a company that goes around and educates doctors regarding these types of issues. So what we did pretty much ever since I got out of jail, we started an education company. We wake up doctors, and, and it's very difficult. But every doctor who realized they may have been part of the problem has now turned that around to march toward a better society and restore faith in the promise of medicine. You have to understand that there is a financial motivation for her as well, which makes her biased and makes her maybe mislead more people just to get more book sales. Now, regarding the final thing, uh, the two doctors that were in the video from California, two doctors from California who own an urgent care. They make the claim that they're being pressured to put COVID-19 on death certificates. Um, so they're not putting something that's false on those death certificates. And ultimately, those doctors make the determination. No one else does. Uh, the only reason why you'd be, quote, pressured is, oh, I, uh, you know what? I can get more money if I put covid well, then, uh, that's the doctor's decision who's doing that because they're the ones who are going to get paid for it, nobody else. So you have to understand that no one is pressuring doctors to do anything. Doctors make the determination on what they put on the death certificates. Okay. Uh, another thing is they talk about immunology and how your immune system is going to decrease because you're not being exposed, because you're wearing a mask, because you're self-quarantining. Well, that's not how your immune system works, but your immunity is not going to go away in a month or two months. Um, you're already exposed to plenty of bacteria and viruses in your house, uh, in your yard, when you're cutting grass or allergens that are out. You're exposed to everything, okay? Also, your normal flora you get from eating food. So your food isn't sterilized, okay? So you get plenty of bacteria from eating food. So that claim is incorrect. Also, wearing a mask, you're not going to reactivate a, a virus, okay? You're breathing into a mask and then you're breathing, you're breathing back in, okay? Well, if it was blown into the mask, so breathing that back in is not going to do anything. It's still in your body, all right? So that claim is also unfounded. You can't get sick from something that, I mean, you might already be sick, so that's one thing, but you're not going to get sick uh, from something that you just breathe out and then breathing it back in. It's just not how it works. So in conclusion, your immunity is not based on, you know, viruses and bacteria. Your immune system is based on your white blood cells. And that's why people who get chemotherapy, uh, it decreases their white blood cells and they're immunocompromised. That's why you have to be very careful, uh, if you're getting chemotherapy and you go out into the public, a lot of times they'll tell you to wear a mask because you're immunocompromised and you're at high risk uh, for getting uh, a virus or bacteria and, and becoming ill. Thank you for watching And Now Public Health. Until next time, I'm Caleb Maybar, helping you prevent tomorrow's public health issues today.